greetings, comrades. I wish I could have been there in person to share in this historic conference, which stands as a testament to the people's enduring and unyielding struggle for universal justice and universal dignity. This international assembly against imperialism comes at a time of genocide. The only moment in history where victims are literally live streaming their own demise. Whole families buried alive in the dust and debris of their homes or crushed under the weight of the walls and the ceilings that once held them together and nestled their memories, their photographs, their aspirations, their arguments, and all the things of living. A whole population displaced into tents, the best of them and the least of them reduced to foraging grass, to cook a soup, waiting in long queues for a bottle of water and a bag of flour to make bread in makeshift ovens. There is no fuel, no clean water, no food, no electricity, no schools, no heating in the cold of this winter, no ambition except to live or perhaps join their beloved martyrs. No fully functioning hospitals left, no mosques, no minarets calling to prayer, no churches, no cultural centers left, no flowers or trees. Israel has bombed it all, all the infrastructure of life, leaving apocalyptic scenes that shock the conscience. Israel's unrelenting inhumanity beggars belief, and then you see the pathological celebrations taking place throughout Israeli society and your brain just short circuits. The humanity and outrage that propels us time and again by the millions to take to the streets all over the world have failed to stir world leaders to meaningful action, save for Yemen and South Africa. But it is not in vain because the masks have fallen. The lie of the only democracy in the Middle East is laid bare next to the multitude of debunked lies the Israeli political and military establishments have tried to pass off to the world. The epic myth of Israeli and Western benevolence has dissipated to expose their rotten imperial core that seeks to destroy and impose violent chaos in order to steal and extract what is not theirs, to line the pockets of the ruling elite there are whole Western populations who cannot be bothered to know or care about what is happening beyond their borders and even with its, when it's with their own public funds. Centuries of rapacious capitalism has turned them into empty shells of endless consumption and pollution, loneliness and depression, aimless people shopping their way through life, disconnected from each other and from our planet. But that too is changing, in large part thanks to Gaza. Palestinians in Gaza are teaching the world the meaning of community, of family, of faith, patience, perseverance, of resistance, and most importantly, of dignity. But they are not superhumans who should or can continue in to endure Israel's barbarity, the likes nor intensity of which we have not seen in modern history, and this genocide must stop. It is not an exaggeration to say that the outcome of this moment will determine human destiny for generations to come. Israel is the linchpin of Western imperialism. It is the last stand of the kind of genocidal settler colonialism that wiped out the indigenous nations of Turtle Island throughout Canada and the United States. Australia, and New Zealand. The outcome of this moment will determine whether we will live in a world where the wealthy and powerful have the final say on all matters and we are mere slaves to their world order. Or we will live in a world where peoples have a right to their own history and heritage and land and resources, where they are masters of their own fate where workers are the principal beneficiaries of the fruits of their own labor, and the people are organized to rise in unison where leaders fail the moral tests of our times. 
the bravery, determination, and commitment of the Palestinian resistance, together with the solidarity around the world, have foiled Israel's plans to colonize Gaza and expel her people into the Sinai, as they originally expressed their plans. Israel's attempt to steal more Palestinian land and resources, especially Gaza's massive offshore gas fields, worth trillions of dollars, has not gone well for them so far. And it is thanks to the resistance, to the steadfastness of Palestinians, and to all of you taking to the streets, sharing content from Gaza on social media, despite corporate silencing, and refusing to remain silent in the face of this genocide. This is a singular moment in our lifetime where conditions are ripe for revolution. Matt Kennard wrote on his Twitter account, quote, The empire has never been more exposed. The media has never been more exposed. The door is ajar. We have to kick it in, unquote. The struggle for the liberation of Palestine is a struggle for global liberation. It is not confined to the small patch of land called Gaza, or even to the whole of Palestine or the whole of the region of Western Asia and North Africa. Rather, it is a global issue that resonates with the very essence of universal justice. It embodies the fundamental right of a people to self-determination to freedom and a life free of oppression. South Africa's decision to take Israel to the International Court of Justice on the charge of genocide is not just an attempt to halt this genocide and put Israel on trial. It is a challenge to this horrific world order we're forced to live in. It is the first stirrings of the global South rising in rebellion against centuries of Western tyranny and domination against CIA orchestrated coups, their never ending wars, regime changes, genocides, exploitation, ruthless extraction and mindless pollution. Palestine has ignited a powerful phase of decolonization and those countries like South Africa and Yemen who are materially supporting us are leading us toward the world we're fighting for where dignity and rights are universal. The pursuit of justice for Palestine is the central fight against imperialism, colonialism, and the right of peoples to determine their own destiny in their own ancestral homelands. Thank you.